Welcome back to my next playthrough series. Yes, I'm going to continue on a little bit with Castle Ravenloft. So I've already done the uh, first adventure, uh, which was Escape from the Tomb. And now we're going to go on to Adventure 2, which is Find the Icon of Ravenloft. And so uh, the gist of this adventure is the heroes must enter the depths of Castle Ravenloft and locate the one chamber untouched by the evil of this place, the chapel. There the icon of Ravenloft waits to help end Strahd's evil. So we're going to continue here, but we're going to be using two characters this time. We're going to continue using Alyssa, uh, the ranger that we had from the first scenario. It's just kind of a continuation. And we're also then going to be using Imril, the... Uh, Aladrin wizard and so we have a wizard here joining the party so I guess Alyssa has convinced uh, the wizard to join her in trying to stop Strahd and his evil machinations all right uh, we're, we'll take a look at the characters here in a second uh, but we'll just uh, yeah let's do that right now let's take a look at the two characters we're going to look at Alyssa quickly again because we've already looked at her in the first scenario and we then will take a look at the wizard uh, and see which cards he has. So let's take a look at them now and then we'll get into um, the adventure and do a turn or two. All right so we have our two characters. We have Alyssa who we're familiar with from the first scenario. If you haven't watched that uh, go ahead and do that. It's up on my channel. Uh, it is the first Ravenloft scenario. Uh, we've got our two healing surges. Again I'm not going to go over the rules too explicitly here. We will deal with that as we play. Uh, so Alyssa has a lucky charm which she drew for the start of this adventure uh, and it basically says use this item after any die roll and it just says re-roll the die and then she's going to have to discard it after she uses it. Uh, she has eight hit points so I'm just going to use an eight-sided die here to keep track of that instead of the little tokens. Of course the game comes with tokens that you can use. So quickly going over her cards because so I don't think there's too much uh, change for her. Uh, I guess quickly we'll look at her. She has a scout ability. It says you're a master explorer. During your exploration phase you can explore an unexplored edge of your tile even if you aren't adjacent to it. So that's her innate ability which is scouting. And then she can use the following power. So we got to select one utility power, two at will powers, one daily power and I'll just show you which ones I chose very quickly. So the first one I chose was uh, her careful attack again. And it's just one adjacent monster takes one damage. So if she's able to do a careful attack and just do one damage to an adjacent monster. Very useful. She has hit and run, which is attack one adjacent monster. Uh, hit or miss, you can place your hero on any square of your tile. So plus six will do two damage. So it's a pretty powerful uh, hit. Now her daily power, now you have to flip this over when you use it. Uh, choose a tile within two tiles of you. Attack two monsters on that tile, so it's called split the tree. If you miss and that monster is more than one tile away from you, place it one tile closer. So she gets to shoot uh, at a range of two tiles, within two tiles away. So that's pretty powerful. It does two if you hit, even one if you miss. But again, you flip it over when you use it. And she has unbalancing parry, and let's use this when you're an adjacent when an adjacent monster hits you, uh, you just have the attack misses instead, and you place that monster on a tile within one tile of you. And again, this is a utility power, and you flip it over. So those are her starting cards, and she has 15 armor class, eight hit points, six speed, and her surge value is four hit points. If she gets knocked down to zero and has to recover, she'll recover four. And of course, this is first level. If you roll a 20, a natural 20 on the 20-sided die, while you are either disarming a trap or attacking a monster, you can spend 5 experience at that point if you have it to level up. And how you level up is you'll flip this card over to the other side where it will say second level, and you follow the instructions. We won't worry about that unless it happens. Alright, for the wizard. Uh, wizard here, which is Immeril. Imer I'm probably butchering the name. He has Boots of Striding. And so it says you gain plus one bonus to speed while this item is in play. So he's wearing boots of striding. So instead of speed of six, he's going to have a speed of seven. So it gives him a little bit of an advantage there. Armor class 14, six hit points only. So that's why I have a six-sided die for him. Uh, and a surge value of three. So basically the surge value is half of your total hit points. And he has lore, his, his innate ability, and says you know the secrets of the monsters. While another hero is on the same tile as you... He or she gains plus one bonus to attack rolls. 
So as long as the wizard and the ranger stay on the same tile, Alyssa then is going to have plus one attack, which is awesome. And so for powers, he gets phase step, which just automatically gets that card. He gets one utility, two at, at will, and one daily. So we'll go through his cards quickly. Uh, so he has Scorching Burst, we chose as a, as a um, at will power. So these are the ones you can use every turn, once a turn. Choose a tile within one tile away from you to attack each monster on that tile. So you can attack multiple monsters, plus seven is one damage. He has Magic Missile. What, what self-respecting wizard wouldn't have Magic Missile? Attack one monster within three tiles. If you miss and the monster is more than a tile away, place it one closer to you. So plus eight does one damage. Uh, now we get into the daily powers. And he has chose Lightning Bolt. Attack one, two, or three monsters. Each monster can be within one tile of you. So on the same tile or one away. Plus seven does two damage on a hit and one damage on a miss. And this is a flip over once you use it. So once per scenario, basically. Once per adventure, you can use that. And utility power, dispel magic. When you draw an encounter card, cancel that encounter card. This is also a flipped over ability once you use it, uh, only once per adventure, but we have an automatic canceling a uh, encounter card. And encounter cards can be pretty nasty. And this is the one that he automatically gets phase step. Uh, use this power during your hero phase. You uh, place your hero on a tile within one tile of you. So he basically just kind of uh, teleports or short distance or what have you. And this is also a flip over. So when you use it, you can only use it once per adventure. So those are his cards. And with that, we are basically ready to begin. So we'll go back to the uh, modular board. We're going to read the uh, read the special adventure rules. So we know there's any special rules involved. The intro to the scenario. And then we're just going to get right into it. All right, so the special adventure rules. The chapel tile uh, is going to appear between tile 9 to 12. So that's already been shuffled in. Uh, and we place the uh, icon of Ravenlaft token and the card uh, once we find the chapel. So we're going to, we are looking for the icon of Ravenloft, which is this little cardboard token. And there's also a card that goes with the... Uh, Icon of Ravenloft. So we're looking for this item, and it's a pretty powerful item. So we're going down into the castle to try and find it. Uh, and it says, um, for the rest of the adventure, each player draws an encounter card at the start of her villain phase. So there's special rules once you find the chapel tile. And we'll deal with that as it happens. So the victory conditions are the heroes win the adventure when they destroy all the monsters placed on the chapel and recover the icon of Ravenloft. So we have to basically get rid of all monsters in the dungeon and recover that icon of Ravenloft. And we are defeated the usual way. If we need to uh, have a healing surge and we don't have any, we lose the scenario or we lose the adventure. And uh, that's really the only way to lose. So let's, say, let's begin the adventure here. It says, a cleric in Barovia has told you about the legend of the icon of Ravenloft. He believes that the lost artifact still exists, resting in the hidden chapel deep within the castle. The chapel remains a safe haven, a place of goodness and light in all that terrible darkness. The cleric explained, if you can bring the icon to me, I can use it to defend the town from Strahd and his minions. And perhaps even find a way to destroy the vampire lord once and for all. Now you stand at the bottom of the stairs, leading into the dungeon crypts. The only thing between you and your goal endless corridors of darkness and an army of monsters. All right, that is the scenario. Find the icon of Ravenloft. So continuing on from our first adventure, we're into now adventure two. And I've decided let's have our newly recruited wizard take the first turn. Uh, and yes, there are little turn sequence cards, uh, which I went over, I believe in the last playthrough. Uh, so we basically have three phases. Hero phase, exploration phase, villain phase. So right now, we're starting with our wizard, and we're going to do the hero phase. And it basically just follows the steps. It says if you have zero hit points, use a healing surge if one's available. Well, he's at full hit points, so no problem there. So he gets to perform one of the following actions. He can either move and then make an attack, attack and move, or move twice. Well, nothing to attack right now, because there's no monsters. Uh, so he can move twice. He has a movement of seven, remember, because he has the boots of speed, or boots of striding. So he can move seven 
squares. Well, and you can move diagonally in this game as well. And you can also move through uh, friendly characters. You cannot move through monsters. Okay, with all that said, let's just have him move one, two, three to here. And that's basically, he's not going to move again. There's really no point. So next in the sequence of play, we're going to go to the exploration phase. If your hero, oops, if your hero occupies a square adjacent to an unexplored edge, go to step two. Otherwise, go to the villain phase. So we're going to go to step two, draw a dungeon tile, and place it with a triangle adjacent to the unexplored edge. So we draw off the top of our shuffled dungeon tile stack a dungeon tile, and it's a white triangle, so that's good. And we'll explain that here in a second. So the dungeon tile gets placed. And continuing on in the sequence, and we'll do this once, and then we'll see if we can remember from then on. Draw a monster card and place that monster on the new tile. All right, well, we have our monster card stack, so we draw the top card off the, off the monster deck and throw it on the floor. <laughs> Maybe that's where it should stay. And we have the much not wanted Wraith. Armor class 15, two hit points. Ouch, wraiths are brutal. And I have to remember, they have something called Death Shriek. When this monster is destroyed, each hero on its tile takes a damage, and I forgot that the last time. So that's going to be a monster controlled by our wizard. And yeah, not liking the sound of that at all. So let's find a wraith. Wraiths are these translucent plastic little horrors, and... Uh, they show up on the bone pile. So there it is. Okay. Continuing on, we are now entering the villain phase. I hope there's not too much glare on this. And the villain phase is if you uh, didn't place a tile, uh, then you have to do, or if you place one with a black triangle, you draw an encounter card. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, if the villains act in play, it activates. Well, it's not going to. And then activate each monster trap in your control in turn order uh, and that you in the order you drew them. Wah, as I'm babbling away. So basically, we drew a white triangle, no encounter card. We explored a tile, which means no encounter card. But we do need to activate the Wraith, so we're going to have to look at the Wraith, and we're going to have to see what his little AI tells us to do. It says, if the Wraith is within one tile of a hero, well, here's a tile, and here's a, yep, he is within one tile of a hero. Uh, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a life draining claw. A life draining claw. Well, I'm just going to have him move. Does it say he moves a tile? It moves within. It just says it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks a hero with a life draining claw. It doesn't say it moves on the same tile. So I'm going to leave him on this tile, and it might make sense to why I'm going to do that in a second. Uh, and he attacks our wizard with a draining claw. Our wizard only has an armor class of. 14. That's pretty sad. And this attack ability is plus 6. And it's going to do 3 damage if he hits. Wow! Oh, wow! Wow, that's nasty. Alright, we'll use the red 20-sided for the Wraith attack. Oh, come on. Let's have a miss. It gets plus 6. Uh, and we have an armor class of 14. 11 and 6 is 17. So, yep off to a pretty horrid start. So our wizard gets hit for three hit points of damage, taking him down half of his hit points in one shot. Wow, that is very unpleasant. That wraith is extremely nasty. That is going to be the end of the wizard's turn. Now we are over to Alyssa. And, of course, following the same sequence again, uh, we can either move and attack, attack and move, or move two times. And what do we have? I think we are going to, we're going to use her at will power. We're going to use this one. Uh, and it's attack one adjacent monster. Hit or miss, you can place your hero on any square of your tile. And so uh, we're going to move her first. And she has a movement speed of six. So she can easily get up to him. So she's just going to go one, two, basically uh, adjacent to him. And she's going to roll to hit. Now she gets plus six. Uh, we'll just put that card there so we can see it. She gets plus six, and it will do two damage, which will be enough 
to destroy the wraith. So we're going to use a nice black 20-sided for her. And what is she going to get? Plus 6, 6, and 16. Oh yeah, so that is 22. That is a palpable smack to the wraith. The wraith only has two hit points. It is dead. And so the special ability here, De Death Shriek, when the uh, monster is destroyed, each hero on its tile takes one damage. And so uh, our two heroes are on this tile. The wraith is on the other tile. So it shrieks, but we don't have a hero on this tile. Our heroes avoid the Death Shriek. And we're going to keep this card. This is a three experience card, so that's pretty awesome. We'll just keep it um, up here. That's our experience pool. Now remember, if we have five experience, we roll a natural 20 on an attack. Uh, we can level up. And we can also bounce encounter cards uh, if we have an uh, encounter we don't like. All right, well, unfortunately, we kind of had to take care of that monster. Uh, and so let's continue on the sequence, see if I've missed anything. So we did a move and then an attack. Uh, but it says, hit or miss, you can place your hero on any square of your tile. So continuing on with that card, the hit and run, she basically ran up here, smacked him. Now she can be placed on anywhere on this tile. Now she does have the scout ability, which means she can scout wherever she wants, but uh, just for the sake of uh, moving her adjacent to an unexplored edge, we'll put her here. So that was part of her ability of hit and run, as she gets to go in any space of the tile. All right, that's the end of the hero phase. On to the exploration phase, which says if your hero occupies a square adjacent to an unexplored edge, then we draw a dungeon tile and place it. And then we're going to place a monster. So we're going to explore right here. Uh, we are going to take the top tile off the dungeon tile stack. And once again, we get lucky. It's a white uh, arrow on the tile. Of course, the arrows point towards the unexplored edge. So, we need to have a monster show up. And the monster that is going to show up for us is a wolf. Okay, we'll look at his tactics here in a second. Wolf appears on the bone pile. And continuing on to the villain phase, uh, if you didn't place a tile, or if you placed one with a black triangle. So we did place a tile, it wasn't a black triangle, we're not going to have an encounter card. Uh, if there's a villain in play, you activate it. We don't have a villain in play. Activate the monster. Uh, monsters are traps that you control in the order you drew them. Well, we only have, Alyssa only has one monster she controls, and that's the wolf. So let's take a look and see what it does. It has armor class of 14, only one hit point. Uh, if the wolf is adjacent to the hero, well, it is not adjacent to the hero. So let's go to the next statement. If the wolf is within two tiles of the hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks the hero with a pounce. So it runs up and it will pounce on Elissa. And the pounce is plus seven. If it hits, it does one damage to you and you are slowed. Okay, well, let's see if that's going to happen. So back to the red die for the uh, animal for the wolf, and it gets plus seven. Alyssa's armor class is 15. Rolls 14 and 7, 21. Easily hits her, so Alyssa will take one damage. She's going to go from eight hit points down to seven, but she gets the condition slowed. And I just, I'm going to put it right on the board. Slowed as your speed is two. Discard this condition at the end of your hero phase. So I'm going to leave that with her right here so I don't forget. So she's slowed by the wolf. So it pounced at her, did her one damage, and she's slowed. And you know what? I think that's the end of her turn. Up next, of course, will be the wizard. But I'm going to leave it off here as the introductory episode. So sort of the intro in part one. And we'll pick it up in the next episode. So we are back at Castle Ravenloft for Adventure 2, Find the Icon of Ravenloft. Uh, we're going to try to shut down Strahd and his evil plans. Uh, I think there are 13 
adventures in the adventure book and I probably crazy as I am will eventually uh, go through them all uh, but right now we have Alyssa and we have Imarel the wizard uh, who is beaten down to only three hit points half of his health already on the first turn wow all right well thanks for watching thanks for subscribing if you do thanks for liking my videos as well give me a thumbs up if you do that I really appreciate it uh, join me next time for the continuation of Castle Ravenloft. We're doing Adventure 2, Find the Icon of Ravenloft. Thanks a lot for watching along, and we'll see you in the next episode.